Hey, this is Blake Bettner, Managing Director here at Worn and Wound. I'm sitting with Zach Weiss, hey, co-founder Blake. of Worn and Wound. Co-founder. We are here to talk about uh, the Synchron Military. Zach, that looks an awfully lot like a Doxa. It does. But it's it not does. a Doxa. Uh, no. It's a Synchron Military. Doxa made a watch called the Army, uh, yes. I believe. Why does this look yeah. so much like it? So, as you might imagine, this is an homage watch to the Doxa Army, which is a sort of mythically rare Doxa with uh, sort of a... A bit of a murky history that I think people are trying to work out right now. It's mm -hmm. something that I think a watch actually only surfaced really in the last kind of 10, 20 years. Yeah. So the uh, scholarly aspect of it is kind of forming. Mm -hmm. Anywhere from like a small handful to maybe like a hundred of these watches were made. Yeah, so hyper obscure. It looked basically just like this. We actually have, were fortunate enough to be able to borrow one of the originals from uh, our friends over at Analog Shift, which we have some photos of. And for the sake of comparing to this watch, so I actually got to see the original. It's a gorgeous watch and you know something I thought was really interesting about it as someone who's not necessarily a big Doxa person mm -hmm. uh, is that it didn't really look like a Doxa mm. to me. You know what I think of a Doxa, that split sure. bezel, yeah. orange dial, the handset. So I think part of what makes that watch and therefore this watch interesting is that it really it was a bit of an anomaly in yeah. terms of like the design language there yeah and certainly uh from a glance the mm. dial is a bit out of the ordinary yeah <laughs> here what's going on with this yeah uh, what do you call this design does it have a name yeah i don't know if it has a name i think it's sort of like in line with 70s exotic divers you yeah. know that exotic being a pretty generic way of saying weird or unique or something yeah. like that but i really lo like it and i mean that's mm -hmm. actually really what drew me to this watch in the first place as nice as the doxa story is i didn't know it i didn't really care about it what i did like was the looks of this watch, which is why I actually picked them on one up. This is my own watch. And so yeah, so the dial here, it's like a sort of a sector dial in a sense. Like there's there's two distinct sections. There's an inner cream area and like a broad black ring around it. Mm -hmm. um, and then really bold markers that kind of come from the, you know, you could say the inside out, but for me, they, they kind of break through this black ring mm -hmm. um, featuring loom. And then they hit this cream ring and they like sort of turn into shadow forms of themselves. Yeah. I think it's a very strong graphic presence and a very unique sort of look to it. Yeah. So it just really uh I don't know, it just it just it just pops. It's cool. You so know? this this watch is uh it's obviously meant for utility. It's maybe like a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon <laughs> or something, yeah. right? The 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 fully indexed bezel, yeah. um the the almost comically chunky hands. Yeah. The almost comically chunky hour hand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the whole thing is sort of comically chunky. You know, that's something that I, I definitely point out in terms of the wearability of this watch. You know, this is a, a 70s barrel case dive watch. It's bold. It's tough. It's 300 yeah. meters. It's not ergonomic. You know, it's a flat watch. It's thick. You could hammer nails with this thing, <laughs> but it's not kind of about... We don't recommend... Uh, yeah, don't, uh, don't uh, hammer nails with it. I don't think the finish would appreciate that. Yeah. To me, yeah, it's more about that toughness and it's more about style you know at this point like you're you're getting a watch like this not to compete with the great contemporary dive watches it's not a, a u50 a black bay 58 or something like this it's a, a funky looking diver you yeah. know in your time with it you've owned this for for a little bit now mm -hmm. is it practical no 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 okay i wouldn't say it's practical <laughs> but that's like that's part of it and you know i feel like sometimes vintage watches or mosh watches they get certain permissions that um other watches don't get because yeah, things like like practicality, weird little design issues. You're like, oh, but it's based on something else. It's like part of what makes it fun and quirky. So, yeah, um, yeah not practical, not necessarily comfortable, mm -hmm. um, but good looking yeah. and tells a story. Yeah. If you're interested in that yeah. story, um, and it's still yeah. wearable though. Oh, it's certainly still... wearable. Certainly. Yeah. Wearable. So yeah, I mean, it's a 42 millimeter case. It's 45 lug to lug, which isn't bad. Mm -hmm. It's a little thick at um, about, about 14. 14. Point, it's a, yeah, I measured even a little over 14, which is mm -hmm. they listed at 14. I don't know what it weighs, but it is heavy. And yeah, I mean, it sits on the wrist sort of like a UFO. You know, it's like it's just right on top of the wrist, which isn't necessarily the most comfortable place. You know, you can kind of <laughs> feel it during the day. Yeah. It definitely will catch a sleeve, mm -hmm. but during the summer on a leather strap on a NATO didn't really care yeah. you know what I mean and this is on the isoframe uh, strap and this is yeah. another brand that was brought back by uh, Synchron yeah so yeah I mean there's there's we didn't really touch on who Synchron is um, and the relation to this watch which is a bit of an interesting story yeah. so uh, you know there was an era of Doxa in the 60s and 70s known as the Synchron era which is when Synchron which was a Swiss watch group owned a few brands uh, bought Doxa and presumably mm -hmm. ran it this watch might have the original might have actually been made in that window i'm not really mm. sure which is interesting 
that ended, Doxa became independent again, and Synchron, I don't know what happened to the original form, dissolved. Then it came back as a sort of parent company owned by an individual who has brought back other brands under the Synchron umbrella. So you have Aquadive, Aquastar, Isofrain, and Tropic Straps. Oh, that's right. And then Synchron as a sort of house brand. And Synchron as obviously directly relates to Doxa, so it makes sense that that was like the name that would work best yeah. with this watch. But yeah, Isofrain is actually made by the same people, essentially. Sure. You know. Uh, so this is the DLC steel version of this. They made uh, just a, a plain steel, plain steel uh, brushed well. uh, case with this. Mm. And each of them were limited to... I'm not honestly sure if they were both limited to 500, if it was 500 oh, total. total. Okay. Details are a little hard to decipher on their website, to yeah. be honest. The and original, though, the Army, uh, was only black, I believe, uh, but because it was this old PVD coating, that rarely survived, so a lot of the examples or photos you'll see online are of what looked like brushed steel watches, but they were likely watches where the PVD was removed. Yeah. Interesting. Once again, things that are kind of being figured out by people. Yeah. yeah. So if you want as close to the original as possible, the black DLC case the black, is the one to have. Yes. Yes, okay. I would definitely say so. And these are uh, unfortunately sold out from mm -hmm. Synchron. Uh, however, they do pop up from time to time in, in the secondary market. Yeah, I didn't find it hard to find when I wanted one. Um, For I, not too far off of retail price. Yeah, so the yeah. retail was $12.90. Um, you know, I believe you're paying within $100 of that. As of time of this recording, that could change, obviously. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, my I, I saw one on a wrist at our pop-up. I liked it. I looked on Watch Recon a few days later. A few days after that, yeah, I had yeah. it, so it wasn't a really hard process. Yeah, for yeah. No, I think it's up. a good price for what it is, yeah. and it's a it's a it's an Eta uh, two eight two four in it, if I'm not mistaken. So it's listed as as either an Eta two eight two four or a Salita SW two hundred. Um, okay. I don't actually know which one is in here, but <laughs> okay. they're basically the same movement, and yeah. they're Swiss made, and you know we've had a lot of experience with both, so I don't care which sure, it is. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I'd like yeah. to know which it is, but yeah. the the Synchron website lacks in a certain depth, uh, which is. I don't know. Part of the charm, I it's guess. Part of the charm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, assuming one doesn't have around twenty thousand dollars to spend on an original example, yes. would you recommend this at uh, <laughs> around twelve to thirteen hundred dollars? I yes, I certainly <laughs> would. And I think also functionally speaking, it's one of those deals where maybe you have, if you were lucky enough to have a Doxa Army, buy this to actually wear outside or go swimming yeah. with, because you know that is a piece of history that very few of you know, exist of, you don't want to smash it on a rock or something. Yeah. No, it's a beautiful watch. If you own an original, let us know down in the comments. Uh, yeah. If you were able to pick one of these up, um, let us know how your experience with it has been. Uh, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in.